Hello to all my subscribers out there and those of you who are just tuning into my videos. This is New York Stilo with a video, a two part video. I'm going to make this a two part video on deep sand beds. Now, the reason why I'm making this a two part video is because there's so much information that I have to relay to you guys that even in this two part video, I'll probably miss out some information and if I do forgive me post comments questions concerns on my videos and I'll I'll be glad to address these issues that I've missed out now the first part of the video which is this one I'm gonna be covering a brand new deep sand bed which is in the system I'm gonna show you guys how the sand bed has began to take shape and it's turning into a live sand bed and further down the road is going to be turning into a natural nitrate reductor. Now, on part two of the video, so I'm going to go into the 90 gallon display, show you guys what a mature deep sand bed looks like. We're going to go hunting for some critters. And I'm also going to be discussing a problem that I had with a deep sand bed years ago. And hopefully this information will be helpful to you that if you do decide to go this route, you don't make the same mistakes that I did. Now, back to this first part of the video where I've got a 4-inch sugar fine deep sand bed which has gone through the cycle process. As you can see here on the top layer you can see the diatoms are growing all over the place um, diatoms is you, you you can actually notice that some of these diatoms are not growing around the rock area and there's a reason for that I haven't touched the sand bed I haven't touched the rocks the reason why the diatoms are not growing on the rock itself or around the edges of the rock is because this is really good quality live rock it's rock that's been sitting on my sump you can see some life here there's like a little feather duster coming out of it um, there's a lot of little worms it's really good quality live rock and it's perfect for seeing a brand new um, deep sand bed so because the rock comes from a mature system some of this bacteria that's on the rock is actually spreading across the sand bed consuming the diatoms not allowing the diatoms to grow anywhere near the rock but what really amazes me at the quality of this rock is the fact that it has seeded or better yet began to seed my deep sand bed and the evidence is here in the first top inch of the deep sand bed you can see here some of the little worms have created caves and little gas pockets on the top inch on the top one inch of the deep sand bed and this basically began to happen about a few days ago I'll probably say about three days ago and I'm very excited about it because this is basically what a brand new deep sand bed should start to look like when you add good quality live rock now here is a perfect example of a worm that has created a tunnel area here and this deep sand bed is just really starting to kick in now let's talk about how deep sand beds work in general basically it's very simple on the top one inch of the deep sand bed grows the critters that are needed to basically keep the deep sand bed working properly now also on this top one inch layer of the deep sand bed grows the aerobic bacteria which requires um, lots of oxygen for the bacteria to basically um, grow now 
this bacteria works pretty much like the same bacteria that is on live rock or your bio balls or whatever kind of filtration system you have this bacteria breaks down the waste turns it from ammonia to nitrite to nitrate now a deep sand bed works in the way that below that one inch surface here is an area of the deep sand bed which is considered anaerobic which is an area that contains low levels of oxygen now on this lower level of oxygen grows another type of bacteria that live on nitrates basically consume the nitrates and release them in back into the sand bed in the form of these little gas pockets now it's more complicated than this in order for the sand bed to work effectively there has to be the critters that live within the sand bed that continuously stir the sand and release these little air pockets into gas pockets basically into the water column reaching the surface and dissipating into the air so it takes time I would say anywhere from six months to a year for a deep sand bed to be fully mature and, and established and working for you in a way that no matter how much food you add to your system, you'll probably see no signs of nitrates at all in your system. Uh, um, I can tell you that you have to wait. Patience is key in this hobby um, you know what they say about this hobby um, they say that good things take a long time for them to happen in this hobby yet bad things can happen in an instant you have to be patient you have to wait till the sand bed basically starts to develop itself in this case because the live rock is so full of life it's created these gas pockets already within a week's time and i suspect that within a month or two this should be a fully established deep sand bed let's look let's look at the side here of the tank and you will see more of the little gas pockets and you can see some of the bubbles are actually going upwards because there are critters that are moving the sand bed so very importantly, um, grain size, I wanted to make sure that I cover that. The sand bed must be sugar fine grain size. If you're going to get a size slightly bigger than sugar fine grain size, it's, it's perfectly that you can go ahead and do that. There's, just know ahead of time that the bigger the grain size of sand, the easier the oxygenated water will actually go down into the, the the bottom of the sand preventing that bacteria that you need which lives on areas that are low in oxygen it'll prevent this bacteria from growing in your sand bed so the bigger the grain size the deeper the sand bed must be in this case i've got sugar fine sand on this system on my 90 gallon system i've got um, slightly larger than sugar fine sand which is also as good you know it's actually a little better to have slightly larger than sugar fine sand for the simple fact that sugar fine sand is easily disturbed and just goes all over the tank so with that said you know this has been part one of deep sand but I hope that it's helped you out it's been informational for you stay tuned for part two I will be covering a problem that I had with deep sand beds before, very serious problem. It can kill your whole tank. And I'm going to be on the hunt to show you guys what a mature deep sand bed looks like in part two. So I hope you've enjoyed my video. This is New York Stilo. Until next time, stay tuned for part two. Peace.